This is, this is a professional show, man. You know. By the way, I did. Uh, I did convince Clark to record something at some point that I am going to just drop in to the episode at some point. To this episode. To this Hi, episode. I'm Clark. Wait, he's dropping it right now. That was it. That was Clark. <laughs> <laughs> oh, you guys didn't know. This week, we dig in the back of the fridge for Empty the Fridge Part 2. This is episode 104 of The Malting Hour. What's the half sound the hops got yeast and peace? This is the Malting Hour where we talk about our drink and tell you what we think every other week. And if we get drunk, well, we might slur our speech. Got the gift of gab, the friends you wish you had. Join us for a drink, join us for a laugh. Time is never wasted, where you getting wasted? The Malting Hour here, people, people take your places. People, people take your places. Welcome to the Malting Hour. I am one of your hosts, Tony Ull, joined always with Brandon Winter and Dan. Dan. That's all I got. <laughs> no, no, that's fine. I, I think I pointed out uh, a couple episodes, or maybe during the Malted Minis, that uh, you constantly switch the name that you introduce yourself as. Yeah, it's like a mystery, man. Hmm. A little the mysteriousness mm. is what draws the listeners yeah. in. The last they time because they're like, "That's a cliffhanger. That's What's he going to be next week?" You know, if you added a different like personality to those names, I would be oh, super excited. Like, I feel like you know, Dan, Danny, Daniel, Hip Hops, all four of those need to be different people. And and which ones do I get along with? Probably That's none of the them. Big group. Hip-hop. No, I feel I feel I feel like hip hop is the one I get along with the most, and maybe maybe Dan, Danny and Daniel. No thanks. Welcome to the Malting Hour. Uh, how's it going, everybody? We were talking right before uh, we started recording. Dan looks frustrated, slightly tired. Uh, you need a hug, man. I know. I just you know a little bit of a hug. Um, I, I want to pop. Ooh, no good. I, I want to apologize to everybody for the uh, last. Um, it wasn't after, yeah, after the final pour uh, from last week. I had every intention of leaving Brandon's after the Super Bowl and posting it like I normally would, so it was ready for the morning. But I went to Brandon's like feeling pretty good, and then me, Brandon, and Mike kind of just we we drank too much. we drank too much basically <laughs> and then i came home and i i played my electronic drums totally forgot uh i took an uber home by the way uh i was playing my drums listening to a whole bunch of 90s alternative rock went to sleep woke up at nine i had the day off uh felt terrible took a shower went back to bed finally got up about 12 30 went out grocery shopping and uh realized i did not post the episode so i apologize for anybody who was uh actually going to work or doing something monday morning that was my fault uh but i did get it out on monday before the the day was done and only I surprisingly me. woke up on monday feeling like okay that's that's great i mean you know yeah. what i should have done brandon <laughs> uh i did not harass you because you guys had already moved like I guess like all your food, except for the snacks, like you had chicken wings, like upstairs. And I, I thought about it oh, too yeah. late. I, I, that's what I was banking on. So never, never be afraid to ask for chicken wings. Oh, I know. I, I, I didn't even think about it. I was just so happy to hang out and watch uh, an exciting football game where the Kansas City Chiefs won and beat the Eagles. Crazy, crazy. Yes. Who, who are you? Why Dan, who are you rooting for? And I won money. Yay. Yeah, you did. I, got I was balls, rooting though, for the Chiefs. Right on. Because and Brandon, I, oh, I'm sorry, we're not done. Uh, well, I have a I have a buddy uh, who is a big Eagles fan, and all he does is talk trash to me about Rodgers. So I didn't oh. want him to win. Jeez. Take it easy, Eagles fan. I uh, didn't really have. Um, I, I liked both teams. I wanted to see the Eagles win, but I got to be honest, it's it's hard to beat. Mahomes and the Chiefs. Um, you know, it just uh so I was happy the Chiefs won. It was a little bit of a lame ending, I will say that. I was hoping for yeah. a little bit more, but I mean that's it's like a chess game, you know? Strategery. Strategery is what you use to win games. Yeah, mm-hmm. I hate um I hate the Eagles. <laughs> um hardcore. And then, well, I, you know, I can't say I hate the Eagles. I hate Eagles fans. And the reason I yeah. hate Eagles fans is because I've worked at Bears. Good. When I was working for the Bears, 
the only like the worst fights were always when the Eagles were in town and people like we knew like it was just going to be a, a shit show because like it would be five minutes into the first quarter and these Eagles fans are hammered and throwing fists already. And it's like, really, dude? Come on. Jesus. Yeah. Well, they're notorious <laughs> for like throwing snowballs at Santa Claus and stuff like that. So they're, what? they're known to be, why would you throw a snowball at Santa? I, I don't know because if they I were like this. one in six that season or something. And they were like mad. So they took it out on Santa at halftime. Oh, why wouldn't you it's fucking Santa's fault? Um, <laughs> because it reminds I, them of Andy Reid. I had um I had I had been escorting a season ticket holder to his chair at one point. And uh so the group I worked in we handled like all the wheelchair services and he was in a wheelchair obviously and was going to his seat and it was an Eagles game. And he told me that like he goes he used, he goes to every away game too. Like he travels wow. to go see every Bears game. That's dedication. Like, he's, yeah, he's a diehard fan. He's retired. He's like, I'm retired. I got the money. Like, I'm. That's what I'm gonna do with my my money. I'm like, all right, cool. We will never said, have that privilege. No, but he said, however, I will not go to the Eagles again because the last time he said he had went, they poured beer on him what? while he was in his wheelchair. They dumped him out of his chair, Come and on. people were kicking him and like just straight up like assaulting him, like you know. That is yeah. the worst thing I've ever heard. That's garbage. It's it's a game, you guys, everybody. I mean, like, I'm I'm a I love sports. I can really get like, you know, pretty amped up about games and stuff, but come on. Don't don't be garbage. Don't be a garbage. Stay classy, Casey. Philly. Yeah. <laughs> now I'm happy KC won. Anyway, this isn't the Super Bowl uh uh <clears throat> recap uh, episode, which we have done in the past. And I think Kansas City won that one as well. Um but this one is much like we did back in September of 2020. It was just me and Brandon and there was a lot of things going on and we didn't have time to really get together. And so we had to throw something together, which is what we're doing tonight. We are emptying the fridge part 2. Grabbing two or three, I don't, I don't know, I only have two. Uh, random beers from our fridge to just sit around and talk, and, you know, that's it. So, enjoy. Hope you guys like it. If you don't, you got this far. I mean, <laughs> I, don't, I don't know what else you're going to do as far as the podcast is concerned. I have I have three beers that I chose. Oh. Uh, I'm drinking mm. one, and not with the intent of drinking all three of them. I just haven't decided which of the Excellent. other two that I want to drink. I uh, Depending on how this goes, I could... Technically, tomorrow, we're recording this on, on, on Wednesday. Uh, I, I took this Friday off as well because we'll get into that shortly. Um, I this is, this is my Thursday, so I don't have a lot going on tomorrow at work. I'm all kind of caught up. I might have a third one. Uh, but uh, let's start with Dan. Dan, you have not done the Empty the Fridge with us before. You uh, Welcome. This is what we do when Thank we you. don't have anything planned. Well, we don't have anything planned for this week. We have... Uh, Lots random of stuff planned. We do. We, we actually do have like a handful of stuff, and we're trying to get our schedules together. Um, Dan, what beer are you drinking today? I am drinking Barbarossa from Cruz Blanca Brewing. Mm-hmm. This is a 2021 it's Imperial the Black. Yeah, Imperial Black and Red Raspberry Ale aged in bourbon and red wine barrels. Oh and boy. it comes in at 11%. And it's a, what is this, a 500 milliliter bottle? So it's not it's not too uh, too small. So I don't know if I'm going to go more than this. This is a sipper. Is this is this the only beer you're going to drink for the episode? It's okay if you say um, this, of course. No, I have or something else I'm going to... Are you going to cap it or I have a, finish it? I have a wild card that I'm going to drink later. Ooh, nothing like no a sweet spoilers. Milk. Have you had this beer before? No, I haven't. Um, and I was just actually just looking. So it's uh, Heaven Hill barrels and Cabernet red wine barrels, but it's really good. It's got like the fruit comes forward. Um, it's black, almost like a stout, but then with like a almost like a red wine. Like it's like, like a reddish tint to it. Hmm. Um, you said there's raspberries in it. Yeah, it's a little sweet, but you get like the tannins from the red wine. Barrels, uh, and not not too sweet, but yeah, it's really good. Uh, I, the only other person that I know that has bought a lot of the Cruz Blanca beers is our good friend Clark. Clark, who is not with us again, he's he's a busy guy, especially a time you know around this time of, of year. He's he's just a busy dude. So hi, Clark. a lot of them are too sweet for me. If I'm going to be 
Oh, you know what? Here, check this out. Uh, one of our faithful listeners, Joe J. What up, Joe? Check, checked it in in June of this past year and gave it a four two five. Ooh, there we go. Yeah, Joe. Joe tries a lot of really fun beers, and I always see that he gets a lot of them from Beer on the Wall in Park Ridge, where I get a lot of my random, uh, you know random build your own four pack six pack or just even one beer and uh, i have yet to run into him joe i was gonna say how have you guys not run into each other or at least planned to run into each other that's true we also have a shirt from him or for him that's uh oh, yeah. give me his <laughs> give me his info i'll send it to him <laughs> i think joe did give it to me and maybe i gave it to you but joe if you're listening which i pretty sure you are go ahead and send us another message uh, on instagram and the multi hour we'll make sure we get that shirt to you um the only other Cruz Blanca barrel aged beer that I remember us having was around the malt was on the Maltese, and I can't yeah. remember what it was. Do you guys remember what was that La beer Tormenta? Was? What kind of mm. beer yeah. was it? We it was oh, the it was. key lime pie Clark beer. Brother. Yes, yes, yeah, yes. That was that. such a good beer. Uh, Cruz Blanca makes some really great beers, and uh, hopefully we do a full episode on that soon. But uh, just a regular. You know, flagship beers are, are very good, but their barrel aged beers are are pretty fun. Dan, what kind of beer did you say this 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 was? I missed it. I'm sorry. I caught the raspberry. Um, I think it said uh, da, 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 imperial, a black and red raspberry ale. So it's just an ale. Okay. Forged by the darkness of Heaven Hill Cabernet. Uh, da, 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 da. Yeah. So then it has like a story about it, like a little narrative but do you, um do you want do you want to do you want to read the narrative for us uh sure do you need your read- oh, a, no, that's right. you're, you're 17 you don't need your readers yet <laughs> a fighter who makes elusive appearances due to the scarcity of its ingredients get your hands on this one before it vanishes exactly oh, oh that was it and we got the uh <laughs> so the, you wasted the good music. I mean, yeah, that, that was, that was, I mean, <laughs> I, I appreciated the music. That was good. There's an eye patch involved. Yeah, the but the fighter part of it. So it's a luchador series, is what their barrel aid series is. So this is like a luchador wrestler, the Barbarossa. He's got a little patch, uh, eye patch on it. Yeah. As you'll see in the picture for this episode. You can take it oh, uh, Dan, how many? Body oh, slams. Can I would you get like, that beer? Oh, no, please. please. Oh, uh, no, I, I, mean, I didn't want to just go jump into out. your like review on it. But please go ahead. Yeah, no. Um, I was gonna say Cruz Blanca. Shout out to the food there too because it's really, really good. They have these like I don't even know what they're called, but they're like almost like Mexican pizza things. Is it a tostada? I don't know. <laughs> yeah, but it's like a giant tostada. It really is, but it's like the size of a pizza. <laughs> is it? <laughs> No. It is. It literally says giant tostada oh, no. on, the, yeah. on the menu. It's cool. hilarious. Yeah. It's a giant. Uh, it's like the size of a pizza. It's it's huge. I and, was, um, I'm assuming you get really it good. without the, the, the flavor. I mean, meat. <laughs> they have, well, they, they have don't a vegetarian have one. Don't they? <laughs> the they do? Oh, they do. Oh, yeah. The, oh, that actually did. There's a sweet potato one. Oh. No, that's not the one. I think they must change it maybe seasonally, but the last one I had. Oh, it's the Classica. The Classica has nothing. You can add your choice of protein, but yeah. Uh, Dude, those sound no, awesome. It was a different one. No, they're really good, though. Um, well, and either way. The beers there, I mean, I love their lagers and their saisons. Um, some of the Luchador series is a little too sweet for my taste, but uh, other than that, their beers are really, really good. The I only... mean, I would. Oh, sorry. Sorry, go ahead. Go ahead. Please, Brandon. Um, I was going to say, I was sold really on that, <clears throat> that La Tormenta. Um, and I've had, you know, going out and about, like I've had, you know, Cruz Blanca barriers here and there. I was just going to say the first time I remember going there was when they had like their, um, I guess it would be a Mexican version of an Oktoberfest. And I think somewhere around here, I don't think I gave it away, but I have a huge, I have two huge like glass steins from Cruz Blanca. Um, Cerveza de spot, possibly, but um, need to get back there because that place is pretty dope. Their outside seating is fantastic, and the first time that I went there, uh, I met up with Jesse, 
our, our good friend who is now uh, where's he's down in Tennessee or Louisville. Yeah, Louisville at uh, well, he lives in Nashville. Yeah, right, correct, correct, correct. And that was the first time that I met Rachel. And then Rachel then came on to our podcast and we were talking about uh, our, I, the pumpkin beer episode. And I brought up that I had met her and she wait, had wait, no wait. idea who it was. That's that's the artist formerly known as Beer Goggles. <laughs> that's right. That's right. <laughs> that's now like beer adjacent. <laughs> Absolutely. Uh, so, Dan, how many body slams? I was going to say slam dunks. How many body slams are you giving this one? Well, I'm not going to give this any body slams but it's only because the complexity of it the red wine tannins along with the raspberries it's a very delicious beer it doesn't drink 11 percent, which is pretty scary but i'm going to give this 4.25 ray mysterio juniors yes great reference fantastic reference good job man i'm, also, I, uh, I'm impressed that you went with an 11 percent beer yeah I mean, yeah, that's, I was, I, uh, I, I think I asked, like, is this your, is this your only beer tonight? Or you I mean, beer? I'm, I'm sick of seeing it in my fridge. <sighs> and you can just you can bring it Poor by beer. us. We'll, we'll drink it with you. No, but Brandon? it's really good. No, because honestly, I was like, nope, nope, okay, nope, nope. we're done. We're done. We're done. Uh, that's, okay. it. that's it. Dan. You had your, you had your chance. You went with it. I'm just, you blew it. And I'm just joking, man. I'm trying to be nicer. I'm sorry. That's, that's so rude. I don't like hearing me be mean to you when I listen back to this. Mm. You should just do what I do. <laughs> What's that? Not let's skip over. Oh, okay. <laughs> now I'm going to continue. I'm gonna continue being a jerk too. Uh, Brandon, what are you drinking? Uh, I am drinking a beer from a a once local brewery that has now moved. That still local, but not so local. Local. Um, it's from Lake Effect Brewing. It is their goes Ooh. reposado. Hey. Uh, tequila barrel aged goes ale brewed with sea salt. If I'm not mistaken, I think I've had that maybe with you, maybe without. What's it look like? Oh, yeah. It looks it's it's that is one of the Lake Effect standard uh, labels there, man. That's that's like I, I appreciate that about uh, Clinton Lake Effect where they do those type of labels where it's just kind of like that. Their Omega School of Brett kind of looks the same way. Um, and they got away from putting a bunch of images on there and started doing a lot of that. That's kind of repetitive, which is is nice. Yeah. So do you think that it's supposed to be? Sorry. Oh, go ahead. Go ahead. Sorry. Go ahead. I, I just Shut I saw the, the label. Right the label. <laughs> The label was like a agave plant. I was like is. wondering, is it supposed to be like a mimic of like a margarita, or does it have some kind of agave? It in definitely it? does. No, it, it's. Well, Brandon's um, about to get into that, Dan. Yeah. Yeah. Sorry. Go on. Um, it is drinking. It's drinking like it goes. Um, I'm getting a lot of that, like that tartness, that little, you know, little feeling like a little kick of heartburn. Um, but I'm also getting tequila. I'm not getting so much barrel uh, yes. as I am getting like actual like the essence of tequila in here. Um, what uh, what type of tequila was it again? Uh, how do you pronounce it? It doesn't say. No, no, no. You you'd said it. it. Read the description of the beer again. Goes Reposado tequila Reposado. barrel aged. Reposado is the type of tequila. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, the only reason I bring that up is because I you were asking like the name of the tequila. So. No, 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 no. The type of tequila. Um, that is like that tequila. I used to really like. Like silver and clear tequila, but that reposado—I can't reposado. Reposado, thank you. Uh, is probably my favorite tequila, and it's also my daughter's favorite type of tequila. Imagine that, Ooh. crazy. Sorry, uh, Brandon, what are you getting from it? Um, well, I'm, I was going to go ahead and read the description real quick too. So sorry, it says, sorry, sorry. I'm jumping. Ahead. Our simple goes recipe brewed with sea salt becomes transformed by resting eight months in a barrel that once housed bourbon. And then tequila. The scent of agave is in the nose of the sparkling ale with notes of earth and sea in the flavor. This ale is refreshing with its bright tartness and smooth finish. Brewed in collaboration with Warehouse Liquors. I wanted it to be <laughs> with taste of <laughs> notes of earth, wind, and fire. <laughs> That's uh, right there. I'm definitely, getting, definitely getting the earth in there. No, Dan, um, I could have been a uh, uh, record, you know, you could have paired it. No, I'm getting. I was actually getting ready to show you a record. That's what I was reaching for. But well, I'm I'm getting some pleasant lime notes in there um, that like complement obviously like the tequila and um, I'm getting the saltiness. It's got a very dry finish, 
Um, but it's super easy to drink. It's only 4.8%, which is surprising. Um, but I like that fact because this is definitely, you know, it's, it's a beer that I, I could, I could see myself drinking again, like repeatedly. Um, and I'm not big. I'm not, I'm not like a huge person. I don't seek out, you know, goes all the time, but, um, from what I'm getting from this, man, it's got everything that I, I would enjoy about a beer. And, and it's funny. So going back to your, like, you know, I sat by the ocean. It's got that, that uh, it's reminiscent to that. And even like, you know, beer for tacos, like some of that, you know, it's got that, all that stuff that pl- the the pleasant notes that I enjoy in, in those beers um, come together in this. And it, it's just, you know, Clint does good beer, man. Like there's, it's, you know, it's, it's not shocking to me, um, but I enjoy it very much. So. That's that's this this whole time as you're saying that I was in my head, you know, just reminding myself, let other people speak and don't talk over people. Like when I edit a podcast and I hear me talking over everybody, I'm like, you asshole, just shut up and let everybody else talk. <laughs> uh, the, that's exactly what I was thinking. Like, I feel like Lake Effect is, is slept on so many times for – the different type of styles that they do and the different barrels that Clint uses and the different styles of beers that he uses in different barrels. Like there's a lot more hits than, than misses. And with this particular style and the barrel that he used and everything that he did, I'm not surprised at all that it, it is as good as you are claiming. Like I, I really wish I had one. Kind of, kind of yeah. I don't remember. Um, like, I remember like the early days of Lake Effect, and like I think then he was much more experimental. He still is very, I would, he's very, very experimental still. But you know, they were trying things, they were trying recipes and things like that, and not everything was like a winner. And he would even admit that, you know. But that's you know the kind of the way it goes for like a new brewery finding their way. The way um, it goes. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Hey, Dan was on that too. The way it goes, and then branded. Um, so, what I was going to say though is, once he got into using barrels, there was a very fine, small, I would say, very small window where some of them just were okay, and then <laughs> it became like good, and then there's some that I would actually say are great, you know? So okay. he, he does really well. Like he knows how to treat a barrel, man. And I, I feel like the only ones I didn't really care for. And that was my particular taste <clears throat> were his gin barrel aged beers. They were, they were rough for me because there was a lot of, there was juniper in there and it was just very, very floral. Like it was just too much, too much uh, juniper spice for me. But, that, but there's that, an audience for that, is what oh, you absolutely. have to remember. No, no, I mean th- those beers, those beers flew off his, his shelf there. But uh, yeah, the, the a lot of his barrel aged stuff, the things that he does, like his fernet barrel aged stout, is so good. Uh, I, I've yet to have actual fernet, but the fernet barrel aged stout was so so good. And I remember, I, and I think that. I've talked about this before, that uh, Mike and I went to a VIP event, and it was just. It was very early on when they were doing the barrel aged stouts. Um, it, it was there wasn't a lot of us there, but we hung out at the brewery for the VIP event and stayed very late. And we drank a lot of the barrel aged stout. And I remember Mike and I just fawning over it, like this dude, this is as good as uh, Bourbon, Bourbon County. County. I remember. Yeah. I remember hearing people yeah. saying that back in like, years and, ago. and it's, and you know, he's got some, he does have some hits and, and, and misses, but I feel like it's more hits than misses. So I'm, I'm super excited for the, the new tap room to open up and to see uh, what else he does. Going off of the sours with him. I remember uh, in fine spirits, which is a bottle shop was an Anderson, it is in Andersonville. Uh, when we used to live over there, I used to go there all the time and I used to get the bombers of like the pample moose and stuff like that, that he would do. The, so those good. bomber pample, that was pample moose hands down still one of my favorite beers from lake effect that was really good but he had a bunch of different sours with the different fruits i can't remember the other ones off the top of my head but i know yeah I'm lake I, i'm i'm really excited for clint to open up the new spot and to see what is uh available 
Like I'm, 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 I'm really excited. Brandon, I'm curious. How? Oh, oh, I'm, I'm, sorry. I'm curious to know how he hooked up with. Um, you said it was warehouse, right? Warehouse liquors. Yep. He distributes. I mean, they're like. Oh, I mean, yeah, don't have a suggestion. A lot I, of shops. When I used to do delivery, I'm I'm almost positive I've delivered there before. For yeah, uh, it's like three blocks delivery. from my work. Don't yeah, he's ladies. he's fully self distributing. So yeah, and it'll be great for the tap room because now people can come in and just get it straight from him, which is awesome. I mean, there'll still be some distribution, but tap room uh, money is where it's at, baby. Brandon, how many goose eggs? No, that's a negative thing. How many geese would you give this Goza? <laughs> uh, I'm gonna go with four. Hmm. Yeah, I like it. All right. Sal four, maybe like four point one. Fantastic, but yeah, uh, super enjoyable. Light, crisp. Um, got those perfect sour notes. Got that hint of salt and lime. Definitely a good representation of a, a tequila barrel aged beer. I am very jealous that I'm not having that in front of me. But keeping with tradition of our very first, excuse me, I burped again. Um, empty the fridge back in 2020. The first three beers, at least, are all Chicago-based breweries because the beer that I am drinking is a beer that uh, I picked up recently and I didn't have any of them. I saw it and I said, oh, I'll grab that and I didn't drink it. Uh, and tonight I'm having one. It is Pipeworks Ninja vs. Unicorn. Ooh. What? It's funny. So, so looking at it, it says uh, it's a Double, oh sorry, it is a double IPA. I thought it was a double paleo when I when I looked at it. I'm like, ooh, a double paleo, that's great. But um, we've had random uh, pipework spears on here. We're still in the process of trying to get pipeworks on here. Um, but pipeworks um, ninja vs. unicorn is probably their most, I would say, famous beer. Am I wrong with that, guys? Here in Chicago, would you say flagship? Yeah, no, it's that's their flagship. Absolutely, sure. uh, yeah, and it's a it's an imperial IPA. 8% alcohol, and I will read this. Ninja vs. Unicorn celebrates the epic battle between two of the biggest hop heads of lore. Brewed with over five pounds of hops per barrel, this unfiltered double IPA is sure to please the most discerning hop lover. Whether you're rooting for the mythical horned horse or the deadly assassin of the East, we hope you'll enjoy Ninja vs. Unicorn. I don't remember the last time I've had this beer and I was, I, I, I saw it at uh, a grocery store and that's what I said. I don't remember the last time I had this. So it's, you know, there's, there's other ones I've had. I've had like a hazy um, ninja verse unicorn. I've had blood of unicorn. I've had pineapple guppy. Uh, oh, lizard King is really good. Oh, lizard geats. Fantastic. That's, that's a, one of the best pale ales in Chicago next to charlatan and, and uh, 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 fractal from uh, old Irving. Um, but Ninja vs. Unicorn was one of those beers when I started brewing and started getting into craft beer here in Chicago that just kind of blew me away. I was like, holy shit, this is this is exactly what I want. And I didn't realize it was 8%. And I had a salad tonight for dinner. I'm drinking this and I'm feeling pretty good. <laughs> feeling pretty good, guys. Um, it's 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 uh, very reminiscent of like a West Coast IPA. Um, it smells piney. Um, very like pine resinous, but it's not like overly hoppy. It's not like a, a, a bitter bomb and there's a nice sweetness to it. It's a light gold, golden color. Um, this is one, of, like, this is the a beer style that, that got me into brewing beer. This is what I wanted to have on tap or in bottles all the time. So, uh, very happy to have this. And if I had to give this a rating, between ninjas and unicorns. I'm going with the unicorn, by the way. I'm going with uh, four and a half unicorn horns. Mm. That's what I that's what I'm going with. It's it's delicious. Yeah, no. And the only the only reason why I shortened it is because listening to you guys talk about your beers, I'm just about done with my beer. And at this point <laughs> we're about ready to go to a break because I feel like we're at like three hours of recording. But that's what happens when you have a double IPA with only eating a salad, we'll be right back.
this poor. What the fuck? Oh, wait, hold on. There we go. I can find it. Do you guys mind if I go first with this one? Okay. Yes. Oh, no. Jeez. Thanks. I'm trying to find information about it, though, real quick. Do you want me to look it, it up on, on tap nope. for you? I found it. I found it. I found it. Shut up, Dan. Just got to let the website load. Okay. I'm ready. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. And we're back. We are back. And after me knocking down my microphone, um, hopefully it still works. That was fun because my headphone cord Boy. is too long. All right. Uh, wow. Brandon, if you look at the screen, you can see the and we're back just clipping so nicely. <laughs> All right. So uh, this next beer, since I pretty much down the first one that I had while you guys were talking, uh, this one was given to me by a Mr. Clark Fetteridge. Ooh. Oh. Yes. He gave me this uh, randomly uh, for my birthday. Is it Nick DeVick? Uh, I know. I wish it'd be fantastic. Uh, this is from Lo-Fi Brewing, which you know what? I did not. This website is insane. As I move my cursor, there are things happening. Uh, I don't know. Uh, can someone check out where Lo-Fi Brewing is from, real quick? Yeah, uh, I would love to. Actually, oh, it's Charleston, South Carolina. Uh, so <laughs> this is Lo-Fi Brewing's Blueberry Wheat. And looking at the description, it says a smooth American wheat made with... Okay, so there's a lot of things happening on this website. Uh, Everybody, go to lofibrewing.com slash beers, and you'll understand what I'm talking about. Um, Smooth American wheat made with German malt and a gentle touch of blueberry to finish. It's 5.2% ABV. Nice. So 4,000 people have checked this in on Untapped, and there's no description. Interesting. Um, it looks like a Deftones. Oh. Wait, is the... I see what you're doing. Huh. What? You're going full on unicorn theme. Oh, shit. I didn't realize that. I am going on full unicorn theme. Hey, look at that. Um, What's the name of the beer? Uh, Lo-Fi no, Brewing's uh, Blueberry show the, Wheat. Show them the can, though. Look at that. Look at that. Everybody can see it in the picture. Oh, yeah. Of the, of There's the a episodes. unicorn. It's unicorn beers. Like oh, Deftones-esque yeah, sort of like silhouette. Well, except the, the deaf, yeah, the, 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 the silhouette for sure. But that was, you know, a white pony. Um, this beer uh, comes off as, uh, let's see, take a look at that. What do you guys, that's a, there's some sediment floating around, number one. Uh, it's got a golden hue to it. Hue. It smells tart, but it's not tart. Blueberries are a little tart. Um, this is a tasty wheat beer, and I used to be a giant wheat beer fan. But then, because I brewed so many of them, because it was very easy in my early homebrew days, just like Cezanne's, I kind of fell off of it. Um, it's good. There is a... Like, blueberries are hard to use in a beer, and I feel like these are probably made... Either with fresh blueberries or they did a blueberry extract that um, was very subtle because they didn't want to get over the top with like a a blueberry pie or a fake blueberry flavor. But it's like blueberries are tough. And the fact that there isn't a like purple bluish hue to the beer, I have a feeling maybe it was an extract. It's not bad, but I will say that. um, Hmm. It's tasty, but I don't think I would like rush to go back to it. Do you guys have any experience with any blueberry beers that you actually like or blueberry yeah. beers that stand out that like you're like, oh, I don't know if I like this or not. So a blueberry is really tough with beers. I had a uh, I just posted it maybe a month or two ago, but it was um, almost blue by Sundial Brewing out in Barrington which is taking over the old Flesk space. And um, it was a blueberry Saison that was phenomenal. It was like purple color. Oh, really, see, see, see that really to me like shows that they use like real blueberries. And you guys, I mean, there's no yeah, purple no. hue to it. That, look, that reminds me of... Uh, Sorry, go ahead. No, there was a... 
gosh. So I've never had anything from Lo-Fi Brewing, but there was like a – Me neither. I want to say it was a Georgia brewery that when I was in Florida had like a blueberry wheat that was like – it was okay. like that color. Like it didn't – it just looked like a regular wheat beer, but I, I didn't really like it and people were like this, would rave about it. I – the more I'm drinking it, the more I, I, I like it. And like the ABV is low. It is a refreshing beer. And like that hint of blueberry is pretty nice. I just don't think it's something that I would necessarily seek out. You know what I mean? Like, where do you think Clark got I, it? Um, Did he go to South he, Carolina? Either he got it from South Carolina or a friend that came up from South Carolina. I will. Uh, check I could in do with Clark. some uh, some mean pairings with something from Lo-Fi Brewing, but you know it is what it is. I mean, of course. I mean, <clears> so I just looked up. I, I went to Untapped and I just typed in blueberry. Um, it's some some stuff came up. Um, there was a beer that I enjoyed from Brickstone Brewery. Remember they had their blueberry pomegranate milkshake IPA. Oh yes, that was like one of the first milkshake IPAs we like. Brandon, was that on the episode where we all yeah. me, you and Clark we were like, together? like holy yes. shit, this is amazing. This yeah. is how they should be. Um, Revolution also did Pursuit of Freedom with Concord Grape and uh, also very tasty. And then back in 2019 from Decadent Ales, I had a blueberry frosted pastry. I only gave that a three. Was not I don't I, I think I gave it a three because the, the blueberry did not come through as well. Um, and then there's a couple other things on here. Um, most notably about the uh, Northwoods. Bourbon County Northwoods had blueberry uh-huh. in it. Ah yes, good old Northwoods. It's either a hit or a miss when you're having it. This I feel like, um, and 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 maybe I'll uh, just on. I mean, you guys can do the same thing, too, as far as listeners reach out to Lo-Fi and find out if it's an extract. I feel like because I've used extracts in the past for beers when I first started brewing and also some other random things when I did uh, a sour that like my base sour beer and I had extracts to pour into it. That's kind of what this reminds me of. So I feel like it's a blueberry extract. I feel like a lot of this. This is a very. um What's the word I'm looking for? A welcoming beer. If like you're going to a brewery, like if you're going to Lo-Fi, okay? I don't know what kind of beers they have other than uh, they've got lagers, Glitter Pony. Oh, they're on the same thing. Chocolate Deluxe, which is stout. They have another, uh, hmm. they have a Festa beer, Mexican lager, something they're going to eat. Like a Belgian. Oh, by the way, Glitter Pony, uh, Brandon, is an essential Belgian triple. Ooh. Um okay. But I feel like this is a beer that you could, if I went to the brewery, this is a beer that would uh, appeal to probably a lot of people because it's it, it's refreshing. Like it's a refreshing, tasty beer. But because I've used extracts, I gotta say, man, this is this is. I'm gonna, if I had to wager on this, this isn't. Uh, blueberry extract and it's not fresh blueberries so if i had to uh, to rate this on pints of blueberries i would say 3.17 pints of blueberries because it is a tasty beer it's very nice it's um what did i say five five and a half like 5.2 percent which is decent um you can drink it on a hot summer day you share it with your friends it's not terrible. I just uh, the blueberry extract, I think, is what's kind of standing out to me. Uh, and if, if they use actual uh, blueberries, I'd be very surprised. And I would say that the mystery to... beer really proved my tastings for sure. I was trying to find a like an Instagram post for that beer just to see if they like described it in more detail. But I can't I'm not finding it right now because a lot of their labels look the same. Um, but I was going to say, yeah, I mean, it's, it's a cool, cool label. Like their website is cool. I like the whole feel of it. I would like to try the fact that like when I go to their beers, it's lo-fi lager, lo-fi blueberry, lo-fi glitter pony, lo-fi chocolate deluxe and lo-fi fest beer. So we get a Mexican lager, the blueberry wheat, the Belgian triple an American stout with abundance of, uh, classic malts and loaded with pure Ecuadorian cocoa, no sweeteners, no BS, 6%. And then a fest beer, which is uh, it says our favorite German beer style, velvet, velvety malt character, golden in color, and one of the finest lagers made with a floor malted Bohemian Pilsner Vienna and Munich malts. So I feel like this beer in particular is one that uh, 
it's like their IPA as far as what they have to be available. It's kind of the one that's like, maybe not an IPA. That's wrong. Like it, it, it's just their, it's their out there beer. They have a fruited so beer. Have, but it looks like they're like, I don't know which one of these would be their flagship, but so like all three of these have the same label. They have some that don't, but there's a Mexican style lager, the blueberry wheat yeah. and an India pale ale. They all have similar labels, oh. just different colors. I like to try their IPA just because, I mean, this, like I said, it's a well done beer, but, um, if I saw it again, I, I in the store, I, I wouldn't reach out for it. So I do. So I want to give a shout out. Brandon looked up the blueberry beers on his Untapped, and I was like, "Let me do the same." I had an afterthought. I did the same thing with blueberry and spent black currants or currants and aged in red wine barrels. That I gave a four or five, and it looks phenomenal. It's got a purplish tint to it, but um, just so you yeah, know, you're you're kind of fuzzy on my end, so I don't know what that means. You're so. you're fuzzy on my end, sir. It's kind of like our friendship, right? <laughs> no. <laughs> yeah. So, uh, Clark, if you have any more of those little five beers, when, when we, you guys, when it gets super silent like that, it's awkward for the listener. Someone's got to jump back in there. That's what I just did. Brandon did a big yawn. Dan, you, you came in here like you didn't want to do this. I had a salad and a double IPA. This is almost like an after the final pour at this point. All right, so we're moving on. Brandon, what are you drinking? So I switched. So I had two that I had selected, um, and I decided to go with a different one because the two that I had selected were both in like – the four and a half percent. Oh no, they were like four and a half to five and a half range. And I was like, I could go a little bigger. Um, I didn't go too big. Um, I actually went with um, Hot Butcher for the Worlds. Meet the Simcoes. Hey man, where'd you get that from? Probably you. It was for me on the Super Bowl. You drunk <laughs> bastard. <laughs> Wait, real quick, just so you know, my favorite blue thing was Blue Bobber. A blueberry ale from Fox River Brewing Company when Brandon and I last year went to the uh, New Glarus Beer, Bacon, and Cheese Festival. Brandon, you remember Fox River Brewing? They had yep. the fruit beer. That was that's my that's the most recent one as far as uh, I can see. So just throwing that's out. not the guy that said let's go Brandon, right? No, no, no. This guy was cool. Oh gosh. <laughs> Sorry. Anyways, Brandon, go ahead. Uh, continue with the let's meet the Simcoes. Um, yeah. So <clears throat> meet the Simcoe. Uh, it's a Simcoe hopped India pale ale. This is my, I think my first time having this. Um, Technically your second because you did have it on Super Bowl Sunday. Oh, yeah, that is. That is true. Um, my Just first time like having it without a bunch of other stuff like beforehand. Yeah. Um, it was a mess. It was a great time, but it was a mess by the time I left. For yeah. me. Yeah. And I think when you guys left, I just went upstairs and went to bed. Good idea. And then after I told Beck, I was like, I'll clean up. <laughs> I just went up and I fell asleep. Which is funny because I said, oh, Mike and I'll help. We didn't. Yeah, I'm dumb. Um, anyways, so this, uh, if you've ever had this before, um, it's super, super hazy. Um, like very, very hazy. It's not. Is this supposed to be considered a hazy IPA? I believe so. There's only a handful is. of of hot butcher beers. It probably just says IPA on the can. Yeah. I don't think there's it, there's like double dry hopped IPAs, but a lot of their IPAs are hazy IPAs. And I want yeah, to this one just says take, Simcoe hopped to take uh, uh, Clark's place here with the quick research. So I, I did know that Hot Butcher does a whole series where they do the meet the blank, and it's like a single hopped beer. So they have meet the Motuecas, meet the Mosaics, meet the Nelsons, meet the Citras, and meet the Mitt Simcoes. And they're all listed as IPA, New England, slash Hazy. Okay. That would make sense then. And Brandon, um, you're not particularly a huge fan of Hazy IPAs. No, not necessarily. Uh, I don't hate them. It's just, again, it's like one of those styles that I don't actively seek. However, um, having this reminds me how much I actually do kind of enjoy Simcoe hops. Um, Cause if I don't know, wait, hold on. I actually looked something up too. Oh boy. Um, yeah, no, thing. like literally, uh, cause I was confirming that this was, it literally was just Simcoe hopped. Um, 
So I wonder if this is kind of like their version of Smash Beers. I mean, I don't know what the malt. Uh, it didn't say anything about be, the malt. But it was, you can't do a hazy, a hazy. And, and, and like have it be a smash. I think there's got to be something else in here. Regardless, uh, uh, you could. I think you could. You can totally do a. Yeah. But that's do, like, like wheat or something in there too. Though. That's true. Yeah, I don't. I don't think it's a smash beer. Or oats. But as far yeah. as a single hot beer, for sure. Uh, yeah, and it's it's fucking it's fantastic. Um, could I drink a ton of these? No, um, but like hot bombs in general, like I've grown out of that phase where like I can't sit there and drink like super hoppy beers all the time, um, like consecutively. But I will say that I do enjoy the the flavor on this man. This I'm getting like orange. I'm getting um, like um, some effervescence. Um, <laughs> There's a nice bitterness to it. It's it's not like an overly yeah. It's not an over the top hazy IPA where it's like you know. No, it, this is not a palate wrecker. Stomach. This yeah. is not a palate wrecker by any by any means. But it's for being a single hopped beer. I I feel like it's still super juicy. Like there's a there's a lot to this beer that I that I enjoy. Um, Simcoe yeah. is one of my favorite hops, and that I haven't. I don't think I've used it in any of my hazy IPAs, but I've used it in IPAs and pale ales. And Simcoe is one of my favorite uh, hops. So I, uh, when I when I grabbed is, it, uh, I grabbed it in mine. And we're, we're using Simcoe in our collab beer that we're doing. Hey man, hey man, I was going to get to that. I was going to get to that. I was going to get to that. <laughs> I'd say this is a shout out to like this is like a deep cut for all the the listeners. But isn't Simcoe like the boxwood? Hop. Is that mm, what they we said? need to get we need to get Joe involved from Dry Hop and uh, Corridor and Crushed by Giants because he's way familiar with the boxwood uh, hops. Uh, but real quick, real quick side note: by the time this comes out, we're already done with what we're doing, and you guys may have seen the post online because Brandon already hit on it. Because Brandon, as soon as you said that, that you chose this beer and you started talking about it, I already pulled up the recipe so I can reference it because I thought for sure that's what we chose. Got it um, yeah, there it is. I got it too. Um, just so you guys know, if you're in the Chicagoland area, um, we are doing something that we've wanted to do for a long time. Dan, we'll get to you, just so you know. And then Brandon, we'll get your uh, review here on the Hot Butcher, like your how many Simcoe's you want. Um, we are doing a collaboration beer with Howard Street Brewing. Uh, we're super psyched about it. It's a pale ale. And it's got Simcoe in it. So that's what Brandon was referencing. We got Simcoe, Cascade, and Amarillo in there. Um, Dan, sorry, I know you can't make it to it uh but i know that me brandon and clark and chuck are all super stoked about it and actually brandon came up with a recipe for it and we ended up just telling chuck the ingredients that we wanted to do because we wanted to be a real collaboration so we gave him the hops the grain and the and the the yeast and he came up with a recipe and so now it's like a real collaboration so you guys can look forward to that um that's did he did he adjust the hops? I don't know. I don't know. We got we uh, we'll find go you know what? the email. I think he may have added one. By Maybe. the time this uh, Cascade Simcoe and Amarillo is what we we okay. chose. He cha- yeah. he did change the uh yeast, which you are we are using omega yeast. Which I think fine. Amarillo is the cat pee or the boxwood. <laughs> it might be. I know it's more grapefruity. But um but just so you guys know if you're in Chicago, we're going to do something this 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 beer is, has has been made. It's been brewed, and uh, just you know, follow us on social media because we're gonna do something as far as a release with Howard Street because we're super stoked about it and we love pale ales. You guys Brandon? should go. You guys should go live so I can see what's going on. I guess. Definitely, we'll be doing some video. Yeah, um, they'll be, they'll be, yeah. yeah, yeah live sounds pretty good. Uh, we're mashing in at nine a.m. Uh, and when this has come out, we mashed in at nine a.m. on Friday. <laughs> <laughs> Which is why I had Friday off. Like I said, you know, this is my Thursday. Um, yeah, super excited. Sorry, Brandon. I know I sidetracked that because you, okay. you had brought it up. Dude, how excited, by the way, are you about making this beer with Howard Street? Um, I'm excited because it's, again, this is something that we, I think, shortly after starting this podcast, it was, you know, a fun idea that we had that, we, hey, it'd be cool if somebody would let us do this. 
Um, and with all the breweries that we've talked to, I think even before we even interviewed Howard Street, didn't they even mention to you like, hey, if you ever want to do like a collab thing too, like yeah, and that was with uh, Joe, our good yeah. friend Joe Steigerwald from uh, Dry Hop and Corridor, and that's still something that we can we can do. But Howard Street is uh, chug chug chugging along here, and uh, they have the opportunity to <laughs> to be able to do a collaboration beer with a podcast uh, before it's you know yeah, I mean it'll be it'll, it'll, it's ask. gonna be it it's gonna be super cool just kind of seeing how they do everything in that in that space. So um, yeah, we'll definitely either be going live. You know, we're gonna be recording some stuff. So. Yeah, super cool. Um, yeah. So you guys may have already seen that. If you haven't seen it, go ahead and check our Instagram because that's what's going on with us at uh, Howard Street. So let's go back to the Hot Butcher Beer. Brandon, how many family members are you rating this beer? I'm going to go three, nine, three, nine. Three, nine family members. Oh, that's nice. Yeah. Oh, just out of curiosity, why three, nine? Um, because I feel like I gave some. The last one of four. Close to four. <laughs> uh, um, hey, man, that's that's honest. That's real. And um, like it, it, like hazies aren't aren't my like. It's not your jam. Typically, um, but I did enjoy the beer. So like, um, it's almost a four for me. You know, but it's a three nine. Right on. All right, Dan, have you moved on to something else? I, we're we're getting probably closer to the end of where we should be. So yeah. Uh, yeah. Not rushing you. I didn't know if you moved on no. to another beer. I did move on to another something, but it's a, like I said, it's a wild card. <laughs> wah, wah, wah. So I, it's carbonated water sketchbook. Oh shit. Water. Hey, Ooh. I was right. It is water. Whoa. I didn't know they did a hop water. Yeah, so they have a hot water that they released, and so they have four different ones, and I'm going to try and pull it up real quick. Um, but so I went there, Sam was getting to get her nails done, I dropped her off at the nail place, and then the kids and I went up the sketchbook. sketchbook. No, oh, she cool. was in, in that general direction, and then I, I took the kids up to sketchbook because they were having like a live band play, and... Um, I decided to uh, grab some hop waters for the road. And so they have four different ones, one with Bravo hops, one with Sultana hops, one with Centennial, and one with Cascade. Uh, Ooh, the one I have yeah. right now is the Cascade. Uh, but hop water, I got some of the hoppy refreshers from Lagunitas, and it's been sort of my obsession lately. Which, so by I, the way, I Cascade did. is one of the hops that we're using in our paleo with Howard Street. That's that's why I drank this one. <laughs> no, but um, no, I, I've just been really liking it because, like, I mean, I usually would drink like Lacroix and stuff like that, but the, to have the hops, especially when they're doing like the single hops, it's like a a cool concept. Are you going into the I office think. tomorrow? I have to be downtown at eight a.m. <laughs> I mean, that's, that's like, why he drank the small, yeah, like he drank the, the the big beer, but didn't go anything else after that. Yeah, smart. well, I still smart. have some of that yeah. left. But um, yeah, no, Sketchbook was a cool space. And I, I went to their, um, what is it, Skokie? Skokie location? Not the, yeah, not the Evans. No, not Evanston. What is that? No, it's, Sco- it's, it's Skokie. Yeah. Well, they have two. That's why I was confusing. But it was the new one. Um, and it was really cool. The bigger one? Yeah. Yeah. I would say. Yeah. Yeah. No, I think, but, uh, actually, Sketchbook, uh, we're going there Saturday. We were there Saturday. We, we were there this past <laughs> Saturday. Well, it's awesome because I didn't know that Sketchbook did a hop water, and um, Brandon and I—I I don't know if we, I don't know if we, I, we definitely did not talk about it here on the podcast. But Brandon and I tried, uh, and Clark and myself, all three of us, because Dan, I don't think you tried any of it. There was like Lagunitas. Um, they have their regular like hop water, but then they did like a, a, a mixed pack, which was the very good. Refresher. Yeah. And then hop lark I discovered uh, at whole foods where I had like a citra, a mosaic and cascade, like just water. And they have teas as well, like a white tea with mosaic. And then they have, we also had the, uh, oh, it's so we had the cinnamon it's one. We had the cinnamon Ooh. one in GABF. Is that hop lark? Yeah. Oh shit! I didn't know that. Oh, oh, yeah. you know what? Shout out to Athletic Brewing because, uh, right? It's it's it's, it's Athletic Brewing. The yep. 
Uh, because of my birthday, and I told Brandon and Clark to sign up for it, I'm not sure if I told you, Dan. Uh, I think it's through Facebook. I signed up for a mailing list on Facebook, and they sent me a code for my birthday, which just passed, and I basically got a free six-pack. I just paid $5 for shipping, and it was delivered this week. It's one of the best non-alcoholic beers I've ever had. It's called their Soul Sour for Black History Month, Um, and it is sour non-alcoholic beers are probably the best non-alcoholic beers you could have, other than Sam Adams Hazy, which I really love. But like it's it's tart, it's sour, it's refreshing, but there's still like this malty graininess in the background with it that's that that that's very good. So uh thanks, Athletic Brewing. Feel free to sponsor us. <laughs> oh, that has we'll blueberry in it. So it's a drink in the actual there. beer. <laughs> yeah, we'll just drink your stuff. It is good. Like we did we we did talk about that for GABF, like how some of the non-alcoholic beers were fantastic. So yeah, that was very lemon and mango. Ooh, ooh, fantastic! But I was, I was saying, I was drinking just the hazy uh, for drinking. Oh, it's right? from Sam Adams. Yeah. Oh, dude, it's so good. There's it, a reason it, one gold. It is. It is like that, and the you know what, uh, Brandon, I already have like a hundred beers. I, I owe you <laughs> in my fridge. That I don't bring to you, but I'll, I'll save a soul power for you as well because. I remember it wasn't Soul Power that we had from them at GABF, but there was a sour beer, and I was like, "Holy shit! I wish like this was something that was available all the time." And they do each month like some type of random beer that they try and do, and it just so happened that February was a sour beer, and I was super stoked. And it's cool. so good. That was going to be one of the beers I was going to try. I probably should have done that other than the double IPA. If you want to save one to drink with me sometime too, if you have multiples, think about it. I do. I have. I have. Four left. I'll drink two more and save the two. One for Brandon, one for you, Dan. How's that sound? Just bring it next time we record, like here. That sounds good. Yeah. Well, guys, that's this was this was a pretty good, uh, it pretty good out. wrap up. Yeah, yeah. That worked out nice. Uh, there were some technical difficulties. We'll see how well I did for editing. <laughs> we'll see how that goes. But you know, the empty the fridge stuff is always fun. Uh, we are moving slowly from winter into spring. We got a lot uh, lined up, and we're super excited about the beer with Howard Street. Um, if you're in Chicago, we will keep posting about that. If you're near Chicago, come on in for it. We'll figure out what, when the hell that's going to happen. I don't know, but uh, yeah. check on uh, social media because we've we've definitely posted about it. Well, we're we're going to make a big deal about it. Absolutely, <laughs> absolutely, because it might be the one time we collaborate with the brewery. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> this might be it. This might be it. Uh, Dan, always a pleasure, man. Always. Dude, you look so like you look just. Are you exhausted right now? What's what's going on? No, no I'm He's just like kids. rubbing no, my eyebrows. That. Just making sure, man. Just making sure you. I want to make sure that you're okay. Okay. No, I'm good. I'm you're good. good. Chill. Right, good. Good to see you, man. Thank you for the good birthday, by the way. Yeah, you're welcome. I have I haven't opened it up yet. I'm super yeah. excited. You'll probably get Brandon? in trouble if you play that on the outro, but Yeah, no, I can do that. It's ASAP Rocks yeah. float on vinyl. Uh Brandon, also thank you for the birthday gift. I haven't opened that up as well. You're welcome. That's a, a Weller bottle that uh Special Reserve. That that I put it up in the upstairs bar so that when people come by and that it's not just for me here in the basement when we're just recording. That's for everybody to come by and enjoy. There you go. All right. Love you guys. And uh, thank you everybody for listening. And uh, we'll see you guys next week. Thanks, everyone. Bye. Bye. This has been The Malting Hour. Be sure to follow us on all social media by searching The Malting Hour and at themaltinghour.com. You can also follow us individually on social media. Brandon can be found on Instagram as bmdub81, on Twitter, bdub81, and on untapped as bdubdrinksbeer. Tony can be found on Instagram and untapped under Ace of Help Chicago, on Twitter, the Ace of Help Chicago. Clark can be found as Clarkowski on all three. Dan can be found on Instagram as hip underscore underscore hops and hip hops on YouTube. Be sure to subscribe, like, and rate the show on your preferred podcast listening platform. Until next time, cheers from all of us at the Malting Hour.